up with Rikesh and we're going to have a bit of a conversation about how open data is used in real world organizations. We're going to be talking specifically now about the role that open data has and the benefits that it brings for Transport for London. Rikesh, great to meet you. Thank Thanks you. for making some Lovely time. Man. Could you just start off by giving us a bit of an overview about um, TFL yeah. and the importance of um, data and working with external stakeholders? Yep, so at Transport for London, we, we make all of our data publicly available, unless there's a legal, commercial or technical reason why we shouldn't. Uh, we have over 11,000 people registered to receive our data, and they range from world-leading platform, technology platform organisations to individuals. And as a result, over 600 apps have been developed uh, to support uh, t uh, Transport for London's agenda. So Rikesh, can yep. you open data? It's yep. gathering pace, the movement's becoming more important. What, what were the origins initially of open data? Where, where did the movement start? Yeah, so at Transport for London, it started around 2007. And what we found was people were scraping data from our website and using that to develop products and services. So we quickly followed the BBC example, whereby BBC was uh, introducing to make TV listings available. And we thought we could do something similar with our timetables uh, and other data sets. So we st started to develop new data sets or at least data sets that were consumable in the right format for developers. And very quickly, we started to see new dip products and services being developed for our customers. Cool. Yeah. So, so Rikesh, can you tell me a little bit more about the, the benefits of open data more, more generally for, for the economy, but also for society? Yeah, I, I think there's at least five or six key benefits. The, the first one would be transparency for an organisation such as TfL by making our data available. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, very, it's transparent, it's the public's data. I think the second advantage is by making the data available, it allows the development of new products and services for our customers. There are 31 million journeys in London every day. Uh, people consume information through lots of different channels. It's important we engage with customers through their channel of choice. I think the third one is it drives innovation and it also enables the development of niche products and services. Uh, because if, TF if there are 600 apps out there powered by TFL data, uh, it's very difficult for TFL to develop 600 apps. Um, I think the next advantage is the economic benefit to London. By us making our data available, it's creating new businesses. And as a result, new jobs are being created, supporting the Tech London agenda. So Rikesh, can you tell me a little bit about um, what you think are the next big challenges or the next big thing for open data? Yeah, I think it's really important that the data, uh, there's an investment by organisations in the data structure, the data format, to make sure it's readily consumable by the ecosystem, the developers. Um, I think it's also very important that rather than just making the data available, there's, there's genuine engagement. You know, an organisation like TfL sharing its challenges and, and issues, and perhaps how the ecosystem can help support that. So I think there needs to be a two-way dialogue. And, 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 and then I think, so rather than just making the data available, there needs to be a genuine partnership. And that, that could lead to better products and services for customers, but also potentially data coming back into organisations just as TfL to make the operational services run even better. So Rikesh, um, you've told us a bit about um, the, the kind of publication of open data, of TfL, yeah. how it helps the wider community, yeah. but you're also a consumer yeah. of open data. Yeah. How, how did that come about? Yeah, so TfL has a wide ecosystem of, d of data sets. So we have data that TfL directly produces. We also have data that some of our transport operators may be producing. Uh, so we need to make sure we've got the right data structure, the right data formats. Interestingly, more recent times, we've also started to work with other public authorities. And more recently, uh, we've started to work with King's College on air quality data. And, and, we're, and we've brought that into our, into our API offering. Open data, yeah. it's very big and very important. Yeah. If, if the concept or the movement of open data was to disappear tomorrow, what, what would be the impacts for, for TfL, but also the user community? I, I, th I think from, from a customer point of view, 42% of London is using app, a, a travel app powered by TfL data. So it's, it, our data is very important, given the 600 apps out there. Um, customers would lose out. Clearly, uh, developers would lose out because some of them have developed a business now, a commercial business, through, uh, through the use of TfL's data. And I think from a reputational point of view, TfL making its data available 
is, is, is the right thing to do from a transparency perspective. And by not making that data available, I think they'll drive some more inefficiencies in the organisation because we'll be getting more queries through about our operations. So thinking about um, sort of inbound data from other users that you bring into TFL, yeah. would, would that have a, a direct negative impact on, on what happens? So, so, so we have started to explore uh, data and insights from, from, from developers. I think that's perhaps the next thing for open data, which is how, rather than TFL just making its data available to developers, how can you drive a genuine partnership where you get, get you're in return getting things back, a shared value uh, from, from, from the ecosystem? So I think it would have a bit this benefit. So, so Rikesh, um, from, from a TFL point of view, what was the, the kind of key sort of tipping point or moment when the organisation decided to start publishing open data? Yeah, I mean, there are different types of data that we make available. And I think it was probably in 2007 where we recognised that people were scraping our data from our website and developing apps. But quite often there were, there were errors with that information. So we started to uh, make our data available essentially the start of open data. And then over time, we developed a new website, and that website's foundations were plugging in APIs and data sets. And what we did in turn is also make that, those APIs available. So Rikesh, once, once you started to get momentum and you yep. started to publish more data in TFL, yep. that must have been quite a complex process because such a large organisation, yep. you must have a crazy amount of, of different data sets. How do you decide on exactly which data sets to publish and in, and in what order? I, th I, th I think you're right. That there's, there's thousands of different data sets in the organisation and we started with timetables. And, and, and schedules. Uh, it's a statutory, requ statutory requirement, so rather than just making them available in PDFs, we started to make them available in much more usable formats, uh, particularly the ones that developers could use. That was our starting point, so it was what I call static information. Uh, we've over time now started to progress much more into dynamic data, and that is where's your next bus, when will your next bus arrive at your bus stop? Uh, what's the level of congestion on London's roads? Where are the, large, where are the incidents currently taking place? So you can pre-plan your journey. So starting in two thousand between 2007 and up to 2010, the focus was very much static. So I guess, Rakesh, sort of fa faced with almost an audit of all of the data that you have, how, how do you decide sort of which data sets to, to begin with? Do you start off with the bus network or, or the, yeah. the, the underground? What, how do you decide on the sequencing? of what, what data to release and in what order? Yeah. So initially we, st we started very much with static data and that was timetables and schedules. We've, in more recently we've started to look at uh, dynamic data which tells you what's the level of conge congestion or disruption on the network at a given time. I think the way we've started is it's you've, you've got to assess what value that data brings to the organisation by making it available. And it, it can be an expensive game. You know, you could invest a lot in sensors and a lot in the technology so you've got to really think about what is the purpose of making that, what, what is the main purpose of making, by making that data available, what value can you bring back to the organisation? Uh, so there's a cost-benefit analysis for every single data set. What, what kind of resources did you need at TFL to actually get into a position yeah. where you could start publishing high-quality data? Okay. So, so if I quickly describe the end-to-end -end process, you have data at source, and I always believe you need to get the data at source right. Let's get it in the right format, in the right structure. That data then comes into what would be my, our team here, and it's, it's a central, central hub. Um, and that data needs to be hosted. So that data is generally, in our case, hosted on the cloud, uh, because I think for open data to really work, you do need the data on cloud. Uh, now, that, that has a cost of hosting the data, but also you need to make sure that you're making it available in the right format for the developer. So that will require some development investment as well. So you've got someone at the beginning developing the data, you've got to host the data and make it, and then use a developer to make it available in the right format. Uh, so there is an investment. So a lot of the cost as well, so in terms of uh, developing engagement with the, the yeah. wider community as well, sort of having hack events and yeah. other things, this yeah. I guess also has additional kind of costs and resource implications. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an investment we focused on in the last year. So it's very important that if you're an app developer using transport information, that you have someone you can talk to. If a data feed's broken, it's gone down, or it's something's not in the place where it should be, uh, we have now a point, a point person that engages with developers regularly. 
Uh, we also need to have an investment in encouraging the development of new products and services. So we do collaborate in hackathons. We've ha we launched our own hackathon last year, which focused on maximizing capacity on the transport network. We also partner with other organizations uh, that, again, has a resource element. But what we try to do is keep the resource to an absolute minimum uh, and let the market develop new products and services. But they need to understand what our challenges are. So, so Rikesh, you, you mentioned earlier it's very important for you to be able to have more of a collaborative, genuine engagement yeah. with, with users of your open data. Yeah. How, how do you go about um, interacting with, with users of open data? How do you get feedback on what's working well for them? Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are 11,000 uh, open data users registered to receive data from Transport for London. So it's a wide, it's a large ecosystem that's growing. In fact, in the last year, it's grown by 56%. Um, it's important that we have the right engagement program that we're making. We're, so there's various things. I think firstly, they it would be great for them to understand what TFL's challenges are. Uh, uh, I think the other one is for us to understand how they're consuming the data and what format they want the data would like the data in. How can we work together to develop their product roadmaps so they're developing features that are relevant for their users and hopefully their users are or their users generally are our users. So we find that win-win. And I think by driving that engagement, what, what it's leading to are the right products that end users want and need. So Rikesh, thinking about um, the, the community, the engagement of users, how, how do you find out um, who they are, what they need, what they want? Do you use API keys? How, how do you find out who they are? So firstly, to register to receive our data, it's a very straightforward process. And the licensing uh, uh, terms and conditions are extremely light. And that's for obvious reasons. We want to reduce the barriers to entry in terms of accessing our data. Uh, what we tend to do is you, you register. And, uh, and then we, we, once you've registered, we give you access in a few hours. And we monitor uh, how many API, API calls are coming in. But there is no threshold. Uh, unless it's unreasonable. Okay. So do you, do you, do you have uh, semi-open, semi-closed data where preferred partners or, or pe organizations, you, you give them access to additional bits of data? Uh, our starting position is to make, uh, it should be a level playing field by making the data available. Uh, what we do at times is through, we have a tech forum and we have a blog. We may announce some data sets being released, which may not be in the final format. But what we do is we try to seek feedback from the developer community to make sure that once we do develop that data, it's in the format that they need it in. So, so to a degree, um, the, you've, you've, I guess, moved away from uh, a kind of data supply yeah. regime to one where you're very much open data demand-led from the community. I think that's the right thing. Uh, because otherwise, what would, be, what would happen is there'll be a large investment in developing data sets that isn't helping to realise the benefits that we've set out. So, so Rikesh, thinking about your community of users, the, the amount of data that you have opened is, yep. is, is vast. Are there any particular sectors or hotspots in the, the developer community that tend to use your data? Yeah, I, I mean, quite clearly, wayfinding is very important to TFL, and there are open data, or there are developers out there using TFL's wayfinding information. I think academics are regular users of our data, uh, particularly PhD students uh, writing dissertations. Um, I would also say, as an organisation now, we're also focusing on air quality, healthier streets. So again, we're finding there's a wider reach of our users. And in some cases, I think there are OEMs, so the automotive industry, uh, also using our data. So the reach itself is, is, is significant. Do you have um, any, any users from, from real estate applications looking for sort of transport information or, or potentially any um, civil engineering companies wanting to know information about uh, people, traffic and flows? Yeah, and, and interestingly, we have a data set, what we call PTEL, and, and a lot of uh, developers and, and local boroughs use that for tra transport planning uh, submissions. So when, if someone is about to uh, focus on a development, they use that data to submit their transport plans as part of that, as part of the submission. So, so Rikesh, in terms of the, the collaboration, the engagements and the partnerships, what, is there any creation of shared value for both you, value that you get as a publisher, yeah. but also the, that emerges from those relationships with users? 
Yep. So, so as an organisation, Transport for London buys things and it's also Transport for London sells things. But I think there is this space in the middle where through TfL, Transport for London exchanging its data, our brand and perhaps the opportunity to solve citywide problems, we could work with partners to drive innovation uh, to, through the development of new products and services, potentially bring data back. And I think that's an area where open data is taking us to as an organisation. Thinking about the developers, are they all UK based or are there developers from international locations, from overseas using your data? Yep, so with 11,000 developers registered for TFL's data, that they are based all over the world. And, and the brilliant thing is, as a result, you know, we, we could run a hackathon and you've got people remotely logging in and developing new products. So it's a very wide ranging uh, international ecosystem. Are there any particular um, sort of hot spots and sort of tech cities, thinking about Berlin perhaps or, or, or Silicon Valley or yeah. New York? We've worked with people from all over the world and we do you know, work with co colleagues from Silicon Valley, some of the larger tech platform uh, providers and organisations. But also we're involved with hackathons that could be in Singapore, uh, Berlin or Barcelona. So Rikesh, thinking about open data as a movement, um, it's previously been quite tech driven yeah. and often one of the big challenges is for organisations to think about how to become open and how yeah. to engage yeah. with external stakeholders. Yeah. What, what have you been doing to try and help other fellow actors in the ecosystem to, to help open up their data? Yeah, I mean Transport for London is a head start because we've been focusing on open data for uh, nearly 10 years now. Um, I think my, my advice would be think about the outcomes that you're after as an organisation. Uh, don't invest a significant amount in the technology. You can start really small and be open and then let it organically grow. When you're considering what data sets to publish, what, what kind of risks are you concerned about? Um, are there security risks with publishing certain types of data? And how do you decide what to publish and what not to publish? So our approach to open data is we look to make it available unless there's a commercial, technical or a legal reason why we shouldn't. T Transport for London takes privacy extremely seriously and as a result we do not make any data available that identifies an individual. The information that we currently make available is either wayfinding to help you journey plan or it might be about disruption. What's the current status on the network? And if there is, an in if there are, if there is disruption, what could you do as a result? Rikesh, yep. thanks for joining us. It's yep. been very enlightening, very exciting. Ah, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.